Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Art of Visualization YouTube channel. I'm JP Loveskachny, and here to share a lot of my knowledge and experience with you to become a better data visualization expert. So in today's video, we look at building a dashboard, a fully interactive dashboard focusing on profit. In my opinion, is one of the most crucial skills that one can obtain as that's where your data discovery starts. So for any data scientist that needs to understand um, what's going on in their data, building a quick interactive dashboard is the best way to find your base insights and work from there to build out your, your further analysis. So in the video today, we'll look at three major items that I've tried to always include in my analysis. First, a time series chart. Then we look at composition charts. And lastly, a geographical view and putting that together into a dashboard, make it interactive and adding filters on top of that. So do stay tuned and hope you like it. And uh, let's jump into it. So to start off, we'll be linking our data. We'll use one of the safe data sources, Superstore. Uh, since it's curated and it's got information around orders and profits and people and returns and so forth, we'll be working with that to focus on our profit dashboard. So as mentioned earlier, one of the three assets we start off with when creating a dashboard, at least when I do what I suggest people to do, is to start off with time series. Now, we know we're working with profit, so I'll double click on that and it will add it to rows immediately. And then we, for a time series, we need a date and we'll use order date. So it is currently sitting in our dimensions, which means it's a discrete value. Uh, so you'll see if I start doing expanding this, it treats it as a categorical uh, variable. That's not something we want for a time series. We want a continuous um, item, a uh, continuous view at least. So I'll undo that. Back to here, you can just click on the drop down, And in the drop down, you'll see these are our discrete measures. So again, categorical dimensions. And these are uh, more of our continuous, uh, di uh, continuous dimension. So that's also what I'll be using here is the quarter, per, um, per, per the quarterly uh, profit. So you'll see it automatically then creates a proper flowing diagram for us time series analysis. I always like to make this a chart view and update the colors since we're working with money, make it the color of money. I also always like to add the minimum and maximum to our chart. We don't need all the values on there because you do get them in the tooltip. So what I do for that is click on label. Always click show mark label so we want to see the labels. But as mentioned, we don't want all of them. So we click on min max and it will only show us the maximum and the minimum values. So here I will just call this our time series, give it a proper name. And that's our first visualization complete. As straightforward as that. So when we move on to the next one, we talk about composition. And for this, I will use segment to create our composition. So again, we can add in our segment. You can either add into the columns or rows, whichever you prefer, just to get it onto the visualization. And then the same with the profit. You can just add that onto rows. Immediately, it will summarize our profit. Now, when we talk composition, we want something that shows it as a whole. Now, there's a few options. You can, of course, use a tree map view. And it is, but I'm in this case going to be using a pie chart. Yes, hold your horses. Um, pie charts are maybe a bit contentious and uh, I would like to share with you one day what my thoughts on that is. But uh, for today, that's going to be the focus. Since we have very few actual values in, in our dimension, uh, we might as well use a pie chart. Now to use the full space, I'll click on the fit at the top here and just say we want to see the entire view. Um, but at the same time, we don't necessarily want to hover to see which segment is what. So that's again where we use the label function. Now, we will take segment and holding command down, and you drag it onto label and it adds it onto our visualization. And the same with profit, just drop it right onto our label again, holding down the command button. We can also format this. So when you do click on the label shelf and you click on the three dots over there, you can, for as an example, make segment bold. We'll just maybe move segment. I'll just cut and paste it to the top here and just align it and just apply and say, OK. So just to give a bit more formatting on there. And again, the value, when you look at composition charts, the value is not as important as the segment that it makes up. So we'll take this, uh, I mean, well, this value we've put in here, this tile. And um, since it is on the text, we, of course, there's multiples of those that determine the size and the segment and so forth, but we'll use the text one. Click the drop down, go to quick table calculation and say percent of total. And that would show us that corporate is 32%, much easier to see actually how they compare to the other parts. Now again, back to formatting, I wanna make sure that we actually only show zero decimals. So you click on the drop down, format, and then under numbers, 
go to percentage and zero decimals. And that's our composition chart done. See how quickly we're flying through this. The last one we want to look at is a geographical view. And I'll just call this map to start off with. And since we have a location hierarchy, we'll just expand that and say, we want to see this by state. It'll start off with a map, little dots on the map, but we need to give it also uh, what kind of measure we're looking at. And that again is profit. I'll double click profit in there and you'll see it's got the sizes of dots. For me, not the best way to visualize this. It might be in some cases, but not in this case today. I go to show me and I'll just do a proper map that's filled out and again, change the color. Uh, in this case, as I mentioned earlier, we're working with money, so profit is money. Um, however, we also have negative profits or we could, we don't want that, but we could. So then we choose a red green. So it highlights in red all the ones that are in negative and green the positives. And you'll see that the midpoint zero is where the transition happens. You can also double check it under advanced. You'll see the center is zero. You can even force a different value. I'll just for now select that. All right, so now we can see the which of our uh, provinces, or at least which of our states, um, uh, have pro good profit, good profit, or some have actually losses. And those are our three uh, three views that we'll be including into our dashboard. We do that by simply clicking new dashboard. I always change the size to a little bit bigger to the generic desktop to have more space to work with. And here you can see the different sheets we just created. Those three at the bottom there, they are also here for us to access and put into our dashboard. And it's very straightforward. You grab onto it and drag it into the dashboard. I do the same with map, drag it in and now you'll see it asks us or it previews where it will be placing it. So we want to place it at the top segment we, uh, we might want to our composition chart we might want to put next to the actual map so as you've noticed when we drag stuff in and i'll just let me quickly go back and show you again when we drag it in it gives you a preview of where it will place it and this this layout is super uh, important and you'll see at the bottom there's is uh, a few th other things you can put in like um, horizontal containers and vertical containers and you can also play around with the actual hierarchy and the layout Something I would rather cover in a separate video because it's a lot of information in there. So by the way, let me know if you're keen on seeing that. Um, but very important to it that you group it properly, especially when you're working with different sizes of devices that will be viewing this. I normally remove these legends. I think um, it should be self-explanatory already in the chart. As you can see, we have the axes showing the numbers. We also have this shading as well as these colors for our segments. So for me, I don't need to see them. What I would want to show is some of the filters that we don't necessarily have to click on our chart as filters. Maybe first let's look at that also. Currently it's not interactive at all. So if we want to see only consumer, there's no way of determining that in our current view. To make it, um, to actually make it more interactive, you simply click on the use as filter um, on, on the sheet itself. Click on all of them, do it for all three of these assets, which means that any one we click on now, would actually update all of the rest. So clicking on corporate, it updates our map and our time series. Clicking on Texas, it shows us um, the negative part. And of course, our, our contribution now doesn't work because it works in negatives. But if we look at another positive one, New York is an example, our composition is changed properly. But let's say somebody wants Nebraska and you don't want to go find Nebraska on the chart as an example, we could easily add the, the dimensions that are used here as filters. By clicking on the drop down, you go to filters and just say you want to see the state or province. And since we know there's also two countries involved here, the US and Canada, we can also simply add in under the filters, the country and region. Same with segment, we want to drop segment in there, filters segment, and now we've got much more to work with. Um, I'll just tidy this up quickly. We don't need to see all of the options here. We'll just create a multiple values drop down which allows the person still to type if they want to see a specific value, as you can see there, let's go to Nebraska as an example, or um, select them individually, or still use the map, whichever you prefer. For country and region, another option there is to use single value lists. So many, so few options, so we can use Canada and United States separately, and also an all button if we want to see all of them. And of course, segment will leave as the normal check it box to be able to see that. What you have noticed is when we do click on one of these values, it doesn't update all of the other assets. Look at that. So segment only updates segment, the country only updates country, or at least the geographical view. 
So even though these um, are filters set for each other, we need to also make sure that the actual filter applies to um, the, the whole worksheet. So you'll see you know, the drop down, you go to apply to worksheets, all using this data source. Since we are only using one data source, any change in this filter would make it in the whole dashboard. And that's exactly what we want. Um, just do it for all of them to make sure it's consistent. So apply to worksheets, all using this data source. And you do it a few times. Now, if we do select Canada, all of the other charts will change as well. One last thing we might want to add in, let's say we want to see the salespersons. Now, we don't necessarily have a um, specific chart for it, but maybe we want to see that um, represented in our dashboard or um, be filtering for that. Now, the easiest way is to go to one of your sheets and you can do that by using that little button. And you remember we've got uh, our regional managers, not our salespeople, like I said earlier, we've got our regional managers and you drop that into the filter, not into rows or columns, but the filter that will allow us to access that in the dashboard and you can just say use all because any values that come up we want to see and click OK. So it doesn't change anything to the to this view however when we go back to our dashboard and we click on the little down arrow there you go to filters all of a sudden we have our regional managers and we can add these as our uh, as a value. So again don't forget to say um, add to apply to the worksheet all using the data source and now whichever regional managers we select, we can see them individually as well. So that is super helpful in my, in my opinion, and also how you build a great interactive dashboard. And that is literally how quick and easy it is to build a fully interactive dashboard that you can use for your further analysis or to deliver as a, as a, as a deliverable. Now, I do understand today was quite fast paced, uh, skimming over a few topics as well. So if you want to dive into more details on any of the specific topics or um, have more other you know, items you're keen to learn about Tableau, please drop that into the comments and let's have a look at what you guys are interested in and we can build videos around that. Uh, it's also nice to know what you guys are interested in. So please do that. So until we see each other next time, this is JP Loveskagni signing off.